New York Prison Escape Part 3. Hello everybody, thanks for joining Lars News. Now we're on... This story is going to be more about the New York Prison Escape. Right you now you see on your screen a CNN article just published a couple hours ago on the escape. And if we go to the top... It says, New York prison escape puts staff-inmate relationships in the spotlight. That's true because the prison tailor was arrested for her involvement in the escape of the two inmates. Actually, a group where they were investigating a possible love interest, and she claimed that, quote, he made him, her feel special. So, as we're seeing on your page, it says, quote, the charges against a person Taylor accused of helping two convicted murderers escape from a maximum security facility in the upstate New York have cast a spotlight on a relationship between inmates and correctional staff. The exact nature of Joyce Mitchell's ties to Richard Matt and David Sweat, the two murderers who are still unlinked, remains murky. A source with detailed knowledge of the investigation told that CNN that Mitchell was having a sexual relationship with him. She was pleaded not guilty to charges of aiding him and sweat. Hundreds of consensual sexual relations between guards and inmates are documented each year in U.S. prisons, according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics. More than half of all sustained incidents of staff sexual misconduct in U.S. prisons jails were committed, committed by female members of staff, according to a study by the Bureau of Release last year. Prisons authorities face in the challenge of monitoring a complex web of interactions. I quote, I understand prisons run on a delicate balance and having a good relationship between guards and inmates, guards and employees. Employees and inmates is important, New York Andrew Cuomo said over the weekend. But there's a line, and when the line is stepped over, then action has to be taken. Some of the high-profile cases have drawn national attention. Another ad that popped up, everyone. Just please be patient. I'm just trying to. Prison break. Doubt seeps in community after 11 days of searching. From Time Warner Cable News, Binghamton. Here's the article. Day 11 of a search costing $1 million per day, and with each day more doubt is seeping into this community and these crews about whether Richard Matt and David Swat are actually in the Clinton County's thick woods. It has been a difficult week and a half weather-wise. Some days are swelting with sun and humidity, others rain-soaked and even a bit chilly. The terrain has also put a damper on the search crew at times. More than 800 men and women are involved in the process of combing over thousands of acres of woods. But there is also the consideration how these inmates are handling this drain. If they are still on the run here in Clinton County, they are likely not as well as 
equipped as a search queue, search crews. Earlier in this process, wilderness survival instructor Steve Lancia predicted by this point it would be likely become very dire for the escape murders Richard Matt and David Sweat. The search continues with a focus to our north on Route 374. It has been closed, but the that road has reopened for regular daily traffic as soon as Tuesday afternoon. With the cost of the search, we're waiting to see if, when the law enforcement begin begins to scale back. That's the severe weather that's impacting Central New York in the southern tier. Flash flood watch issued. Let's see if we can play this video. All rights are reserved. Time Warner Cable News. Here's we're having some technical watch video. Get A 10. thick fog has settled over All the right, over time in Cable Clinton News. County this morning. It is day 11 of a search that we now know is costing the state one million dollars per day. And with each of those days, more doubt is seeping into this community and into these search crews about whether Richard Matt and David Sweat are still actually in the thick forests of the search area. It has been a difficult week and a half weather-wise. Some days are sweltering with the sun and humidity, others rain-soaked and even a bit chilly. The terrain has also put a damper on search crews. More than 800 men and women are involved in the process of combing over these thousands of acres of woods. But there is also the consideration of how the inmates are handling the terrain. If they are in fact still on the run here in Clinton County, they are likely not as well equipped as the search crews. Earlier in this process, we spoke with wilderness survival instructor Steve Lancia. He predicted that by this point, it would likely become very dire for the escaped murderers Richard Matt and David Sweat. They've got skill. They've, they've got urban survival skill. They've learned how to survive prison and get out of prison, acquire tools. Their interpersonal skills are no doubt up to speed. Um, so they figured that out. I think the more the weaker someone gets, the more desperate they get, the more dangerous they become. As one trooper told me yesterday, at one of the checkpoints, like the one behind me, this process becomes more and more stressful for them with each day that it drags on. Jeff the Ruddick, search is planned Hayville. to continue to our north in, on Route 374 Time in, in the area moves. of the woods near there. But that road, which has been closed Dana during Moore the daytime, may open for regular traffic as soon as this afternoon. And, of course, with the cost of all this, we will be waiting to see just how long it is before law enforcement begins to draw down. In Clinton County, Jeff Reddick, Time Warner Cable News. Remember, all rights to this video are to Jeff Reddick and the Time Warner Cable News team. Now, we are going to go to the, this video. Here's another video, but it says the search for the two escape murders continues. So, oh, this is more about Joyce Mitchell, so we're going to play this video. Same, all right, to reserve the time where cable news and Jeff Reddick. We're just going to have to wait a little bit. Lock the pop up. No, oh, we're just going to have to allow the pop up to begin. Well, it looks like this report of Joyce Mitchell conspired with inmates to harm husband. Right, time more cable news. Technical issues right now, huh? Uh, technology. Well, that video is 
waiting to load. I'm going to go down this article. Quote, an agreement between... Oh, here we go. We can watch a video. Governor Andrew Cuomo says he's tasking the inspector general with investigating the prison break at Dannemora 10 days since the search for escaped murderers Richard Matt and David Sweat began. At the same time, their alleged accomplice was back in court today. Jeff Reddick is at the search perimeter tonight with the latest details. Jeff, good evening. Good evening to you, Kate. Police transported her two and a half hours from Rensselaer County to here in Clinton County, but Joyce Mitchell's court date barely lasted two and a half minutes. Silent going in. Joyce, why did you do it? And silent coming out. Joyce Mitchell went before the judge again on Monday, but this time in jail fatigues and shackles. Bail has been set uh, at 100,000 cash, 200,000 bond. The 51-year-old stands accused of providing tools to Clinton correctional inmates Richard Matt and David Sweat, a move contributing to the convicted killer's escape. Monday's appearance was merely procedural for Mitchell, changing attorneys due to a conflict of interest before waiving the hearing altogether. She will appear next in Clinton County Court. This obviously has become a national, um, you know, media high-profile case. Outside, Clinton County DA Andrew Wiley did not rule out more arrests aside from Mitchell for the escape. He also alluded to what may have been Joyce Mitchell's sinister plan for her husband with the two escapees. An agreement between Joyce Mitchell and both um, Matt and Sweat as to whether they were going to harm Lyle uh, Mitchell, I'm not going to comment on that. These guys are supposedly still around, so it's uh, you know very nerve-wracking. The search rolled on into its 10th day Monday, but kids did go back to school for the first time since last Wednesday, with no outdoor activities and under the watchful eye of sheriffs and troopers. It is scary, because you, you can't have your kids outside playing. That's you know, a sad thing when you think about it. No new updates from state police Monday, no inmates found, and no indication when or if the search will end. Tuesday is set to be the 11th day of searching here, Kate. Now more than 800 searchers are canvassing about a thousand acres of woods so far with much more to go. Jeff Reddick reporting for us tonight. Thank you, Jeff. I will be leaving a link in the description of this video on the two videos that I've played from Time Warner Cable News. Have a nice day. Credits, Caleb Osborne, Time Warner Cable News videos, links, music was used from music, free music archive.